We know that masks at this point are a very important tool to help prevent transmission of COVID-19. In addition to hand hygiene and physical distancing, masks use when we look at states that have higher mask compliance and mandates for wearing masks, they tend to have lower cases of COVID-19. Also, we've seen that when people have been exposed to somebody else with COVID-19 infection, if they've been wearing a mask, they oftentimes are protected from getting infection themselves. So masks have demonstrated themselves con consistently to be a very helpful tool in preventing infection. Important tools with wearing a mask, they have to be worn regularly. So it's really important that when you're going out, in addition to remembering your phone and your keys, to remember to take your mask with you. Um, easy to forget because these are relatively new and the things that we have to take with, our, take with ourselves when we go out somewhere, but taking your mask is important. Wearing your mask as intended is also really important. So it has to cover both the nose and the mouth. And so oftentimes you see people wearing their mask underneath the nose and that's a no-no because the droplets, the respiratory droplets can be both spread from the wearer if their nose isn't covered, but also you're exposed and those droplets can reach your mucous membranes of your nose and increase your risk for acquiring infection. So if you're not covering your nose and your mouth, you're still at risk. Other important things with masks, um, it's important not to touch the front of the mask. You can contaminate the front of the mask. It's a good idea to put it on and take it off by using the loops at the back of the mask or taking it off from the back and doing hand hygiene before and after you take it on and off. And then well-fitting masks work better than loose-fitting masks in general, both to protect yourself from droplets coming in and also to reduce the amount of droplets that might come out. N95 masks are masks that are specifically used generally in the healthcare environment, and they can be used even when providers are in the room with somebody with COVID-19 infection during an aerosol generating procedure. So they protect not only against the large respiratory droplets that can be transmitted by anybody with COVID-19 infection, but they also protect against the very tiny little droplets that can travel further distances. And we tend to see those only when patients with COVID-19 are having aerosol generating procedures. So when they're being intubated, for example, or having other procedures on their airway, they can create that can create these tiny little droplets that can travel further. The trade-off for the N95 respirator is that they have to be fitted to the, the, to the wearer. So the wearer has to have a fit test to make sure the N95 respirator is fitting appropriately and performing appropriately so that it has a good seal. And again, for that reason, you tend to see it only in the healthcare environments where that fit testing can be performed. They can be uncomfortable if they're worn for a long period of time because they have a very tight seal. Again, you need to have more of a seal when you're trying to protect against these smaller droplets. But again, fortunately, we see only very rarely, again, when COVID-19 patients have aerosol generating procedures. The surgical masks have been around for a long time. Everybody's familiar with those. Um, obviously, they were invented for surgeons to wear during uh, operations to protect the patient from the surgeon's mouth, but they also protect the wearer from respiratory droplets coming in as well. Um, seen in that used in the healthcare environment and very important there. Um, protect against the large respiratory droplets that COVID-19 patients uh, can produce when they cough. Um, so very important, very helpful tool in the healthcare environment. And also, obviously, they're worn outside the healthcare environment as well. Cloth masks are a very helpful and effective tool at preventing infection. Now, ideally, the cloth mask has at least two layers of, of fabric to help prevent both the respiratory droplets from going into the mouth and prevent transmission of droplets outside of the mouth. There are some cloth masks that have a filter that can be placed um, that's providing another layer of comfort. Some cloth masks have three layers, so it's even more layers. And again, there's some cloth masks that only have a single layer. So ideally, it's good to have at least two layers of fabric on the cloth mask. And it's important for cloth masks to be uh, washed fairly uh, frequently, so at least periodically. Some cloth masks are never washed, but you wanna wash it periodically to make sure that you're keeping it clean. The issue with masks with valves, and those are pre predominantly seen on N95 respirators that have a valve, is the, it allows the wearer to breathe out and it allows air to escape. So it protects the wearer from incoming droplets, but it's not as good as preventing droplets from the wearer going out to other people. And so if the wearer of the N95 mask with a valve had COVID-19 infection, for example, they might still be able to transmit out through that valve. So it's not as good as an N95 alone for protecting the other people outside of the wearer if the wearer were to be infected. Bandanas still provide some protection, but they're not as good as the cloth masks, the surgical masks, the other masks that we've described. They tend to be more loosely fitting and so it will allow more droplets to leave from the wearer. And so if the wearer were to be infected, it might allow that to transmit out. Um, if you have more layers of fabric, it's better to have a bandana that's folded over and has two layers of fabric to protect the wearer and to protect others. And a bandana is better than no mask at all. 
So certainly they have a role. You want people to have some mask on and not be completely unprotected, but they don't work quite as well as a nice well-fitting cloth mask that has two layers of fabric. Neck gaiters have been in the news because of a study that came out from a do group. And then those neck gaiters are these, that tube of fabric that people can wear around their neck and they can lift up to cover their mouth and nose. People like those because they don't have ear loops. They can kind of come up and down a little bit. But there was a study that came out of Duke University that was published. Really, the study was looking at a way to figure out how do we quantify how well masks work. And in this study, they used a laser and a camera and a computer algorithm to calculate the amount of droplets that came out from the wearer of a mask. And they compared that to a, wear that, a test subject, a person that had no mask on at all. And what they saw was that most of the mask decreased the amount of droplets compared to somebody that not wearing a mask. But when the person had a neck gaiter, they actually saw more droplets in the air when that person was talking. And so the hypothesis is that the neck gaiter, actually the fabric split some of those larger respiratory droplets into smaller respiratory droplets. Now there isn't any clinical conclusions we can make from that, but it raises the question of whether or not these neck gaiters might allow large droplets to be split into more smaller, smaller droplets that be, might be more readily transmitted to other people if that person were to be infected. I think the take home I get from that is that a neck gaiter still protects the wearer to some extent and it's better again than having no mask at all. There's some question about how well it protects people around the wearer if the wearer of the gaiter were to be infected themselves. And so I think the gaiter can provide some protection. If they're just being worn for outside use, say during exercise, maybe that's okay. But if you're in an indoor environment, it's probably better to have a cotton mask that has two layers of fabric or some of these other masks that we've discussed. We're still learning about these different masks and their pros and cons. Uh, the most important thing is that people are wearing masks regularly. The more people wear a mask in general is going to be helpful. So even if you don't have access to the best mask, um, if you have access to a good mask, that's still going to protect you and other people. And so we want to see people wearing masks, doing hand hygiene, and doing the physical distancing. Um, I, the news about neck gaiters is something that we need to learn more about. But if that's the only access someone has to a mask, it's probably better that they're wearing a mask than no mask at all. Overall, I think the important message is that we all need to be wearing masks to protect ourselves, but also each other, because most of these masks provide pretty good protection. And actually the cotton masks that most people are wearing that when they have two or more layers actually perform very well. They can be reworn, reused, so you don't have to worry about supply chains, which is what we have to worry about with our surgical mask and N95 respirators for our healthcare workers. Cotton masks, if they're cleaned regularly, if they're worn and cover both the mouth and nose and fit appropriately, provide excellent protection, not only for the wearer, but for the people surrounding the wearer as well.